Cat Hood from Passions and Pastimes, and we're back with another Maker's Monday. Um, on the table in front of me, I have a variety of supplies um, from jewelry jars or repur yeah, repurposed from jewelry jars. Um, for example, these uh, chip beads were from a stretch bracelet. Um, they're plastic. Um, this is from an earring. This is also from an earring. Um, some brown glass beads, some brown rounds, some bright orange, and uh, sort of in the orange range beads. These are some larger sort of peach and gold. You can see there's some sort of orange undertone there. Some gold seed beads. Um, some large rounds in the uh, brown and orange and uh, white. The only... Um, Supplies on the table that didn't come from jewelry jars are these uh, bead caps, which are from Cherry Surplus Supplies in uh, British Columbia. And uh, these Toho um, number eight seed beads that I think will uh, add some nice touches. And what I'm thinking of doing is making a two strand necklace or a necklace that starts out as two strands and joins and becomes one. So one of the things is that I, I realize I don't have a lot of these chip beads and usually chip beads are used by pushing them uh, really sort of very close together so that um, they don't take up much space for the number of beads involved. And so I've been playing around with trying to see um, what else I could do to sort of maximize the use of these. And I think they look quite lovely with these little gold spacers in between. Um, so what I'm gonna do is um, sort of see how many, or sorry, how many inches of these I have to work with, um, because I think that'll deter help determine uh, what I can do in terms of the length of the necklace. As you see, I don't have a, a huge number. Here's um, an example of a necklace uh, these are stone unikite um, chip beads with um, some green glass beads and then some orange jasper spacers. So you can see there's an awful lot of beads. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. That's about an inch and a half. So um, that's maybe a little, well, yeah, that should be about an inch and a half. So that, but because they're all different sizes, you get different numbers in, in that space. Um, so I don't have enough of uh, these um, brown ones, brown chips, to uh, to make a necklace this long. I probably have, I don't know, if I were a guess, I might have the, you know, this length here. That's uh, four times one and a half, so um, six inches maybe which is not enough um, for the necklace that I'm planning. So I'm gonna try, um, first of all, to see how many inches I have if I space them this way, and then combine them with all of these other elements, um, and we'll see what I have. So I'll come back as soon as I've done some spacing and measuring, and let you know where we're going. And in case you're wondering, this cloth that I'm working on today, this is, um, an example of some of the weaving that I do. This is um, a design for a baby wrap uh, used by mothers who want to keep their infant close uh, and be able to carry them hands-free. Um, and I usually weave these in lengths of uh, four and a half to five and a half meters for that purpose. And this is um, a design that happens to go from um, blue through oranges and yellows and then ends up back at blues and greens sort of a rainbow effect but you're just seeing half of it here and this is there's always leftover cloth um, you know cloth where we I do some experimenting and so on so this is just a piece that I have left over um, from cloth that I've woven and this is just a simple weave um, but uh, very effective for uh, baby wraps and for other things. You could make tea towels out of these. You could make a tablecloth. Anyway, just thought I'd show off some of my weaving as well. I'll be back in a minute. Well, I'm back after stringing the uh, chips. Um, I have nine inches here on this first string. And I, I was just using some scrap uh, beading wire. 
So nine inches and just under two inches. So let me just double check that I got that right. Oh no, sorry, eight inches and two and just under two inches. So almost 10 inches of those beads. Um, usually, um, you know by the size of the bead uh, or can look up based on the size of the bead, how many beads would fit in an inch or in a, a centimeter. And then you can figure out from there how many beads you're going to need for your project. Um, but because chips are uh, odd sizes and often triangular um, in shape and they nestle together differently, so you're gonna get different numbers per inch, um, I thought uh, I would do it this way because then I also can see uh, how nice that looks with that little bit of uh, gold sparkle between the chips and also give me an idea of, of how much distance they will cover. So I have almost 10 inches of those beads to work with. So now let's get to designing. I'll be back with uh, my bead board and uh, some ideas. And I'm back with a little bit of an experiment of design. So I have the two strand necklace going. Or actually, uh, I've tried this earlier and I would like this dangle to be on the top part of the necklace. So I'm kind of keeping to a lower profile with the beads down here. And this will be the bottom strand of the necklace. So it's a little bit heavier profile. So this is as far as I've come in terms of the design. And then I thought that since this is going to be on the inside, that this is where I would start um, having some of the chip beads. Well, there. Whoops, that's not what I wanted to do, but kind of like, there we go. Anyway, in there. But I think that looks like too long of a section. So I'm going to try to keep it to, let's see, an inch would be about that much. What do we think of that? An inch. This orange bead belongs there, I think. And then probably another orange as a spacer. And then another inch, maybe. Well, that's not too bad. Or I might in have a few other spacers in there. I've got these uh, white beads that could be used with the oranges like that okay and then I would do the same thing on the other side um, and I'm probably going to keep this strand smooth so let me go off and do some more um, experimenting and I'll see what I can come up with but already I've got to four and a half probably four inches on this side by the time I get all the bead caps and so on in there um, so that's nine inches. I probably need to take this on a mat. Uh, since this is on the inside, I don't want to make it too long. So probably af somewhere after this inch of uh, chips, I'll want to join it to the center piece. So I'll need two inches of chips over here and uh, a couple more uh, orange and white beads. And so I'm going to go away and do some more experimenting here. Let's see, I've got this... I've included my bead caps in there so they're kind of in line so I don't I make sure I have enough of them. And I probably need to start putting some more orange in here, but I think since this is going to be the bottom strand, I think it's time to look at whether it's that solid orange. I also have this um Oh, I like that. I like that uh softer orange in there certainly could have some space or beads involved and then those I've also got a couple of brown not sure I like that that bright orange in there at all um, and then I have all these other brown beads which I may need they're kind of bright well, I go okay with those. Hmm. Interesting. I'm not sure where I'm going to go from here. 
Um, but that's always uh, part of the challenge. I also found a couple of other, I found these brown beads with the white in them. They kind of look like candy. So I wonder if they have a, a spot in the scheme of things. Let's see. Or do they look better down there? No, they don't. Oh, that's too bad. Okay. Hmm. Now they're just not, they don't help. So I like that. I like that. I'll have to see where I need some uh, more. Or I have these smaller orange beads as well. And some... I don't know if you can see them. I have some smaller orange. There's that one. And then there's that one. I think that's it. There's one that's not quite the same color that belongs. Yeah. So, interesting. I don't want it I want it to be coordinated so maybe I'm gonna to have to put some chip beads up in there as well and not have too many color changes anyway I'll come back after I've done some experimenting but I really like the way the bottom strand is going so I'm back it's really hard um, for me not to jump ahead in the design um, when I'm away from the camera and you will see that I have swapped the uh, focal. So this one that I had dangling in the top, or the strand that I had in the top is now in the bottom and reversed. And I've gone ahead and done this full strand with the one inch of uh, chip beads and realized that an inch up here helps with my distancing and my spacing of things but also looks quite nice so now I'm going to join these and I've already experimented with this I'll grab the two wires I've put some gold spacer beads two large ones one large one tiny here and then I'm just going to string on this Sorry. Whoops. I want it on both strings. This glass bead. Go. You know, you have to, if you're going to make a, a a double strand necklace in this way where you have two wires, you have to make sure that all of your beads are going to hold two wires. Um I was doing that last night and I was enlarging the hole in this lovely glass bead using my bead reamer like this and the bead was going in there and this is what happened I guess there was a fault in the bead it was probably just pressed bead to begin with but I guess I put a little too much pressure on it bead cracked so now I was short a bead and had to go hunting um, for another pair of beads so um, this pair of beads is quite nice it's got some I don't know if I can make it focus better there we go this bead's got some texture some lines in it so that's what I ended up doing so and I'll do the same on the other side with me while I try look using the camera to see what I'm doing it's harder there we go so those two strands through and I want the small there we go there nicely positioned so a nice a nice join there so the, the wires all covered I like the way that's sitting so I'm at about just about five and a half inches now in terms of 
the length of my necklace. So I have to figure out what to do for the rest of it. So I want it to go up to at least nine inches. And these are the beads that I have left. Um, so I'm gonna, and I oh, well, I have two. Oops, sorry about that. I have two inches of the chip beads left. So I'm gonna go sideways. So obviously I can put an inch of chip beads on each side, and then I have. Let's see. I have a a, a medium orange, a brown, a white. Uh, a light small, a medium small, a dark small, and same for the other side. So those cover, hmm, how many inches? Let's put them over here. You get the, I don't, it doesn't really matter. So that's about one and a half, almost two inches. So if time you have spacers, at least two inches there, an inch of, of the chip beads, that's three inches. So that's taken us from five and a half to eight and a half. So I just got to figure out how I'm going to space it all to uh, fill up to 9 or even 10 inches. So I'll experiment with that. This is what I have to work with. These these brown beads just, they go look nice with the chip beads, but they just don't fit in. They look even better actually on the camera than they do. They look fine there. So maybe they have a role to play now in the uh, in the chip beads above that one spacer. Let's see. Hmm. Well, uh, time to experiment, and I'll be back. Well, you're probably wondering what am I doing now? Well, I've started doing the uh, single strand of the necklace, and right here, I, sh I guess I should have put another orange one on here. I'm really just comparing the way it looks with the um, short, uh, the, the full inch of uh, chip beads uh, with two brown beads versus um, just four of the six chip beads and two brown beads. And I, then there would be another orange on the end here. And I actually like the shorter section simply because it coordinates better with the other brown sections um, on the necklace and they I don't want it to be too heavily brown in any one spot so I just thought I'd drop in show you that little uh, design consideration I'm gonna change both sides to look like this and then I got to figure out what to do um, there's about seven to eight inches on the back of the neck that you don't really see unless your hair is up. You want it to be as nice looking um, as the rest of the necklace, but it doesn't have to necessarily be exactly the same. And, and certainly these large beads would be lost out of sight uh, at the back of the neck. So I have to think about the best way to finish off uh, the last uh, maybe six inches of the necklace. Um, since I'm now at 16, another 6 inches would take me to 22, which is hmm, maybe a little too long. I might aim for 20 in an extender. So I'll be back. Well, passions and pastimes viewers, here is the finished necklace. I've uh, finished it off with a little bit of chain at the end in case you want it longer. Here's how the uh, graduations on the... Uh, straight section worked out and here is how it hangs um it'll be more like that when you're wearing it um so i'm quite happy with the way it turned out i learned an awful lot doing this maybe i'll turn it around this way let you see it from that angle let you see it sort of straight on bring it down and let it drape and uh I always like to finish off my extender cords with a little bit of, of a matching bead. Um, if you have any questions about this piece, don't hesitate to ask me in the comments. Thanks very much and thanks for watching.